Greetings, Indie Warriors. Welcome, everybody, to I Dream of Indie. We don't get to do a lot of interviews around here, but I'm always excited when we do, especially when we have a fun personality like Evelyn Rose Hall here, who is at Pixie Freaking Sticks on Twitter. Do I have that That's right? That's right. Where's that name come from? Um, I had to come up with a nickname for, like, an MMO I didn't want to give out my normal email address, so that just came to mind, and I was like, all right, that's who I am now. <laughs> so you are a game designer, writer, and creative director over at Stegosoft Games, that's most right. notable for Arafel, JRPGs, classic RPGs. Uh, your latest project, Rise of the Third Power, just launched a few days ago. Super exciting. I called it, quote, one of the greatest games I've ever played. Uh, I know that's flattering, but, you know... I'm a bit of a tough reviewer, so you should be you should be uh, greatly honored by that quote, right? I'm blushing terribly. I'm wearing this makeup, <laughs> you probably can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn, though, thanks so much for taking some time to talk with me today. I imagine you're pretty busy with the launch of the game and everything going on with that. It's pretty, yeah. It's um, a little bit first, crazy. It, it's a very complicated, big game, and it's impossible. Like we beta tested the crap out of this thing, and wow. there's still so many little bugs that are coming up. And we're all, we're both, me and Joey are both perfectionists. So, can you tell me before we get into the game a little bit about your path into games, into this industry? What led you into the industry and the yeah, founding um, uh, Stegosoft? Well, uh, when I was a kid, I bumped into RPG Maker. Um, and just started playing with it, and it just I just connected with it really well. Um, I was very interested in character writing, more so than like plots. Like I would never really plan out my stories. I just like to have fun characters and just have them interact. Um, and so I would just build maps and have characters banter on them, and that just turned into Rise of Third Power one day. <laughs> cool. Now, um, with Arafel, that's a game, another game that I really loved. And uh, so when you're working on a project like that, uh, what's the connection with Rise of the Third Power? Like, are they interwoven? Do they go together with one another? They're, Do they play off of we, one another? Not officially. So um, as an no, so yeah, not not formally. Um, they're kind of like I guess Rise of Third Power is like kind of a spiritual successor to Arafel because it's like a very similar feeling game. Um, but they're not technically they're not formally in the same universe. But um, as an author, I kind of if you haven't specifically said yes or no, then kind of anything's on the table. And just because you didn't plan it that way doesn't mean it's not. If that made sense. Yeah. Um, so we haven't planned for them to be in the same universe, but. We, Joey and I did like throw around ideas for like there's actually a couple ways we could make that work in a really fun way. So no plans for it right now, but the answer isn't necessarily no. Yeah, they are thematically quite a bit different from one another. They have a little they bit are. of the same DNA, you know, obviously. But uh, no, I kind of want to know more. I I love the story of Rise of the Third Power in particular. I love both games. Mm -hmm. I've talked about that. But what kind of inspired the story of Rise of the Third Power? It does have a lot of political intrigue around it, some heavy topics. And I'll get into a tweet that you put out a little bit later about how, you know, you had a reviewer out there that said they were able to predict the game quite easily. I disagree <sighs> with that myself because there's a lot of curveballs and you really do have to play this game a lot to get the most out of it. But uh, tell us a little bit about the story, what inspired it, how much of you is in that story, too? Well, that last one's tough. Um, a lot is the last one of that part. Um, <laughs> Sorry to throw a two-parter at you. But. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, so I made Arafel. I wrote that story originally way back in like 2004 or something. I was a really inexperienced writer. I was just, I had just seen Lord of the Rings. Um, I, I don't, when did that come out in theaters? Some, sometime kind of around then, 2002-ish. Yeah, 2002, 3? I was yeah, like a senior so, in high school, so I'm yeah. dating myself, but. Um, yeah, me too. Um, so um, I watched that. I was really inspired by it. And like originally, uh, when I put this together as a hobby project, um, you know, you I used middies from like different games and movies back then. So like the Aloria Village theme was originally the Shire, Shire theme. And, you know, they all live in caves. So there's a lot of Lord of the Rings. They, they find a ring. The king is named King Aragon instead of Aragorn. There's just like, like a lot of little references in there that I didn't notice I was doing when I made the... Uh, when I made it. Um, so anyway, I did that and it was an okay story. And then I came back and revisited it in 2016 um, and finished it and fleshed it out and used my additional experience as a writer to improve the story and the characters. So after that game was successful enough that we decided we wanted to keep doing this, um, I gave the same treatment to Fred's Third Power, which I 
put out uncompleted in maybe 2008, 2009. Um, might have been 2007, actually. Um, but anyway, that one was um, after reading Game of Thrones, which is a much more grounded uh, fantasy setting, much more political. Um, and one of my friends back then was like, because I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with this story, and I kept thinking of all these high fantasy crazy concepts, and he was like, why don't you make something like more political, like, like do something, and so I tried it, and it worked really well. Um, and so the, then we came back and revisited that one in, I guess, 2017, no, it was 2016, it was right after Arafel released the, the not enhanced edition on Steam. Um, I started rewriting the story then, and um, ended up taking six years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and there's a lot of great personality. You can show the love and care that went into this story. Talk to me about some of the characters. So there's a drunken pirate here. There's a lot of different types of characters with their own unique personalities. That's a real important aspect of any RPG. What inspired some of the characters and their motives? Um, so another thing I was really inspired by um, are 90s anime. So Cowboy Bebop, um, Slayers, um, those are the, the two big ones. Um, and there's just like a lot of big personalities in that that are uh, Western media, at least at the time, tended to be much more subdued. Um, and especially in games, personality was like almost deadpan and I hated that. So. Um, even back in 2003, when I started Arafeld, that's really what I focused on was trying to make sure everyone felt alive, but had like big personalities and really felt like they had a presence in every scene that they were part of. Um, so Rise of Third Power was just an attempt to build on what I had started in Arafel. Um I don't suppose you've ever heard of a game called Super Robot Wars. I have heard of it. I've not played it myself, though. It's um, very obscure. I don't even know if it made it to Western media back in the back in the day, but the Super Nintendo version of that had these really fun um, pixel art portraits for all of their characters. Um, and that was, you know, back in the RPG Maker days, everyone used ripped graphics from games because these are all hobby games. Nobody was selling them back then. They were just passing them between friends. Um, and so all the characters, I, I love those portraits. So I just based a character on what each portrait looked like. So the main character looks like this grumpy, easily annoyed, everything is going wrong for me kind of guy and that's how Roan was born and then there's like a cute haughty looking girl and I was like that's totally my princess um if you look up I don't know if I'm going to pronounce her name right but it's Ryune Zoldark Zoldark um if you look that up she bears a striking resemblance to Karina from Rise of Third Power she probably is the one that's closest resembling to that um so it was but it was really just the portraits had a look to them and i want i really like visual consistency i wanted the writing to match what the portraits were and so i just wrote the characters based on what i thought they looked like did you put any of your own personality in a specific character is there one that's kind of you know has some of your traits or characteristics i think they all do and any author that tells you that that isn't how they write their characters is lying <laughs> <laughs> um like if I had to pick one that was closest to me, they all have, possibly to a fault, but they all have kind of my voice. I think you can tell that they were written by one person and written by me. Um, so, you know, I, I went through some struggles in my life and that's kind of Rowan and I'm kind of sassy on Twitter, as you notice, that's Karina. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I got out of it, too. I yeah. did feel a little bit, even in the few interactions we've had, a little bit of your personality does come through <laughs> those characters. And I think that's awesome. It's a shame, you know, a lot of people don't actually know you because well when you play the game you don't really get that but now I'm starting to get yeah. it so it's really cool. Well that's good. <laughs> so with that said one thing that I thought was interesting that you mentioned was that you're actually not a fan of turn-based battles so that's them. where the story mode came in with this game and if you don't yes. know for those that haven't played the game yet there's actually I believe four difficulty options in the game so if you really want to challenge yourself you can if you want to just enjoy the story aspects which I think is great I'm a huge fan of accessibility options in games so you were the driving force behind this story mode. Tell me about that, though, and especially when you're making an RPG to not have a to not be a fan of turn based battle system. That was just interesting. Yeah, to I am. Um, so I suffer ADHD and that makes JRPGs kind of hard to play. Um, but they're the only games as a kid that I could really lose myself into. So um, mm, I agree. Yes. Yeah. Um, what was the first one I played? I, my 
I always tried to avoid turn-based battles as a kid because I always had this problem. So it was Secret of Mana, Illusion of Gaia were the two big ones that I loved. Zelda's like kind of an RPG. Um, so there's those are probably the big three. And then I played, I want to say Super Mario RPG might have been my first turn-based game. And it was so good that I was, and the writing is so tight and small that it works really well it's funny too um, isn't it yeah yeah it's, it's really cute they, they do it the, the writing in that game is amazing and the, the translation is really nice too um but that was the first time i was really able to like push through a turn-based game and then later in life i played chrono trigger and i just fell in love with chrono trigger um I'm rambling. What was your question? <laughs> no, that's <laughs> fine. But I feel a lot of those influences in this game, like, you know, I mentioned in the review Suikoden, which is a game that's really mm. all about politics and warfare. Do some of those later 32-bit JRPGs and RPGs I inspire never, this game? I too? never played any. Never liked any of those games. Okay. I never, I never, I mean, they might be awesome, but I never, I never had a PlayStation. I had an Xbox when I, in the early 2000s, and that was, I mean, there just weren't hardly any RPGs on those. Um, and I had a Nintendo 64, and they also, none of the, like, no, I don't think Square Games got on there at all at that point. Um, like, Quest 64 was the only RPG on there that I played. <laughs> um, so, um, so I was just there a point where you kind of, you fell out of love with the genre, or just things in life were no, getting No, yeah, or? it just didn't work out that way. Mm. Um, I was, um, boy, when did I get back into it? Because it wasn't until much later in life that I played Chrono Trigger. Um, and this is before, well, no, I was... I was in game development at that point too. It's the big thing is RPG Maker is accessible, and that was one of the first like really accessible game development tools for someone who didn't know what they were doing, which is mm -hmm. me. Um, so I most, I mean, I, I've always loved that type of experience. Secret of Mana is my all-time favorite game. Baldur's Gate 2 is my second all-time favorite game. So I'm real, I do love RPGs. Um, notably, neither of those are turn-based, um, but. Um, Yeah, it was mostly like, if you wanted to make a game, that's kind of what your option was at that point, <laughs> was RPG Maker, so. So I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the reviews, going back even to Era Fell, and then we'll talk about reviews recently for Rise of the Third Power, because, you know, we're, a re we're reviewers here at I Dream of Indie, but sure. at the same time, they're, oh, you have a cat in the background, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's clever <laughs> but i'm always curious because you know you've watched our review at least one of them now you kind of know it's a little bit different from your typical review we don't do scores or anything like that right. i'm not a big fan of labeling games with a number because i know the work passion and all of that that goes into games so i'm just curious you know these were kind of predictable scores for rise of the third power for me sevens eights that kind of thing for something when you work on it for that many years, what does that make you feel like to just see it kind of reduced to a number and, you know, for people that to not really, really get the same thing out of it that maybe you good uh, did? point. That's a great point. So, Arafel was the first game that I really, I mean, it was the first game that I, that meant something to me that I made. Um, everything meant something to me, but that was the first one that, like, really, like, this is my baby. Um, and, you know, I've been working on something involving Arafel on and off since 2004, 2003. Um, so it was just a part of my soul at that point. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot of people, like everyone was like, this is good, we like it, but it just didn't resonate with everyone the way I was, I was like, this is clearly the greatest game ever made. I can't, you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, I can relate to that, you know, in your heart, you really believe you've made something special and that, that hurts when someone tells you, you know, takes you down a peg or, you know, yeah, and there's like reduces a lot of, it. I mean, it's it's a big, dense game. And one thing that I might do that's a mistake, um, or at least a mistake from a do you want respect from reviewers perspective is I like to start with tropes and then subvert them later, which yes. I did, like, I did that hard in Rise of Third Power and yes. then did it, like, you know, it's a, a slightly less subversion, but it was still in Arafel as well. But they start tropey on purpose. So Arafel's chosen one, collect the artifacts, but both of those tropes are subverted. And then Rise of Third Power is um, resistance versus empire. Yes, because, well, a lot of people that don't realize if you did only play the game for a couple of hours is actually yes, the game exactly. gets very dark and actually gets very heavy. It gets into some deep subject matter. Yeah, I mean, that's it is why about it's a little bit frustrating, <laughs> you know, when you do hear a review like that and they didn't really, yeah. you know, I'm not usually the guy that says, oh, the game gets better as it goes. But in the case of something like Rise of the Third Power, it kind of plays out like a book where it just gets more and more interesting. You meet more characters. The characters are a little bit slowly rolled out. You don't have your mm. whole party up front or anything. And that's something I really loved about the game so 
you can talk a little bit about that creative decision too. Yeah. Um, well, in, in the defense of whatever reviewers, um, you know, they've got, they're trying to make a living. They're, they're not like, I don't think they were dishonest or anything. I just think they, they came to the conclusion that they did before it had a chance to really ramp up. And mm -hmm. I think like 90, well, this is, I don't want to like flatter myself, but like 95% of the time they're right. Like if the game starts that way, it's not going to do this like see, sneaky subversion that happens much later, um, which makes all the earlier stuff defensible is not the right word, but just creatively, you know, right. Right. it is a bit of a slow heavy. build game. In fact, yeah. I would say actually the first chapter of the game, in my opinion, is the weakest chapter and things kind of just slowly ramp up as a good story mm. should, you know, but it gets right, your hooks right. with some interesting characters. It does start out slow. Yes. But from a reviewer's perspective, we review a lot of different games here. I didn't think right. that was fair. That's just my opinion. I didn't think it was. Yeah, fair I don't think so either, but I don't think they were. I don't, I don't think it was implying, malicious. I don't think it was right, malicious. You weren't implying but, that or anything, right. but I like I, I get it. I, right. And that's like, you know, if you want a reviewer's respect, you just have to, you kind of have to plan ahead. You have to plan your game to appeal to that. And right. I, I hate that, but maybe that's yeah. kind of what you have to do. And I don't know. I'm actually not a huge fan of that way of thinking. I think no, you should never limit it. yourself creatively. And, and I think you should make the game that you want to make, which is what you did here. And that's why I have so much yeah. respect for this yeah. game. Well, so with that said, Rise of the Third Power, you just get all this work done. Are there any plans to revisit the game and add some more content to it? Are you just kind of waiting to see how things play out? There isn't, there aren't any plans to do like DLC or anything. Um, I generally, don't like DLC. Um, I think you should make the game. You should try and make the game that you want to make, um, mm -hmm. and it should be as complete as possible. Um, so, if there, but if there's like a clamoring for it, then you know, as long as we didn't deliberately leave stuff out, you know what I mean. Um, so, I, I, it's hard to imagine where the room for that would be. Mm. Um, we talked about like having. Like adding a big casino area to Angelico because there wasn't there aren't enough mini games in this and it's just mini games can be tough and we had all these like neat casino graphics that we didn't get a chance <laughs> to use and we we're like why don't we just make like a free DLC that you can like optionally pay for you know what I mean like so if people want to basically donate extra money they can um, but ultimately we decided not to do that it feels tacky somehow and I, I don't know that it is I think maybe we're being a little unfairly biased but that's how it feels I think this universe you're building with Arafel and now Rise of the Third Power if we had some sort of cool galactic combination where they come together <laughs> and we just have this crossing of universes like Capcom versus SNK or something like that I no I'm just kidding but... <laughs> <laughs> like a fighting game that would be fun <laughs> <laughs> but no I do think there's so much interesting lore so many unique characters in this game that you could do a lot with it in the future so yeah. I hope it is successful anyway ways i've done my part to try to get word out there about oh, thank it you. But, you know it was deliberately set up to have a sequel in mind like it's it ends on a cliffhanger and like i have arafel people felt like ended on a cliffhanger but it wasn't intended to like that was supposed to be like a a resounding conclusion like there and everyone's like well what's what happened next and i wasn't anticipating that i thought it felt very over but as the writer it's you're just so biased it's hard to know how the players are going to feel sure but rise of third power is very like I know what the sequel of that's supposed to be. So hopefully, hopefully I can get make that. I have another question to go back to media a little bit, if you don't mind. So I don't know a lot about actual, the actual process of making games. What do you think? Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the biggest thing that goes into making a game that maybe the media doesn't understand when they're reviewing or talking about games? Oh, that's a really good question. Um... I'm going to sit here and like stare off into space while I try and think of a good answer. This is where editing, um, editing comes in handy here. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, oh man, I'm really going to have to think about that. I'm just going to start rambling a little bit. Um, okay. So, it's when you write a book, when you write a book, or when you're planning out a book, there's a, a much easier structure because. With prose, you can do whatever you want. You can pull, you know, you can go to whatever location you want. You can just describe it in words. You're not waiting on assets. You're not waiting on music. You're not like all these different parts of it. Um, so that part's obvious. Like, obviously you're kind of constrained, but the story that you planned out is often not feasible for a number of reasons. And you won't really realize that until you're halfway through the game and you're like, 
our lead artist doesn't have time to work with us anymore. And the freelancer that we wanted to work with has moved on to other things. And we're like, how are we going to do this? Hmm. Um, and you just have to make concessions to it. Now, that's part of the reason Rise Third Power took, I mean, God, I worked over seven years on that game total. Um, and um, I imagine I said, like have, a mini existential have, crisis there. <laughs> you have other things in your life too to deal with on top of working with this game, I imagine. Yeah, well. because yeah. like I don't want to. Uh, I've tried to write a novel before, and it's really hard. And I'm not trying to like. It's hard to compare one person writing a novel and a team making a game. I do feel like making games is harder, um, at least from a technical perspective. There's like, so many creative... moving pieces with a game, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's just a lot more to manage. I mean, mm. it'd be like if you had a team writing a book and then someone else had like a maybe like again, a <laughs> again I'm not a game designer but I feel like a lot more can break in a game. Is oh that fair God. to say? <laughs> yeah, that's fair to say. <laughs> um anyway, so like what do they not know? It's it's the they tend to be, especially, I think, um, I, I don't know for sure if this is true, but it feels like a lot of reviewers are nitpickier towards a, you know, we were formerly an RPG Maker project, and we moved to Unity, and we have some free to use graphics in our game and, and stuff like that. I think reviewers are more inclined to be nitpicky and less forgiving because... That's a little bit frustrating to me, actually. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut yeah, you off. Yeah, no, but... no, go ahead. Of course, you're going to use some assets from a, pe a previous project because you right. have to, you know, why would you start from scratch? That doesn't make sense to me. Why would you start everything from scratch? You got to use I like, some of <laughs> I, I like the idea of doing it from scratch. I would really like everything to be unique. Uh, literally, to I would game, say but... almost every video game sequel or at one point or another uses some of the same animation, that's, some of the same aspects. True. Like, it would be true. foolish not to. That's just my opinion. I, you're totally right. Um yeah, no, you're you're right. Um, there's <laughs> Air, Airfell and Rise of Power both use quite a bit of um, f like free to use graphics that anyone can use. Um, that is like maybe eighty percent of Airfell. Yeah, that's probably too much. But and then like fifty percent of Rise of Power use rough map graphics. Well, um, my point to that is, is who cares? It looks great, you know. <laughs> that's the thing. So like you've seen them before, but you haven't seen them before like this, and you haven't seen them before in a game quite like this. Sure. So people yeah. are too fussy about. Anyway, so. Nobody's really fussed about that in reviewers or in reviews, but I feel like reviewers see that and then they're kind of like, this game can't be that good. And then they're just kind of biased towards being kind of nitpicky and being kind of like, eh. That's what scares know, we, me, we especially give... about when you label a game with a number. And I think that's where a lot of critics come up short because I think that's pretty damaging because a lot of, for people that are just watching a video, I hate to say this happens, but it does. A lot of people will skip to the end of that video. They'll see the seven. They'll say, I that's don't necessarily true. need to play that's this. True. That's I, a big I problem agree. in games media. That's a huge problem, I think. And especially when you have a game like Rise of the Third Power that deserves time and it deserves attention. I really hate to see something like that. But anyways, yeah. go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's I mean, that's basically where I was going with that anyway. <laughs> um, hopefully, you know, hopefully we, there's... The indie game market is so saturated, and the RPG genre is so saturated. I mean, everybody when we, when we put this trailer out, it was like, "Oh, great! Here comes another Chemco RPG," <laughs> and like they, a bunch of people didn't realize it later. Like, no, this is like an indie. But anyway, um, there's just a lot to overcome to be successful as an indie dev specifically, and then an RPG dev specifically, and then making this epic giant game that took what feels like half my life to put together. Um, yeah, to come down to that one moment, it is pretty yeah. crazy, I imagine. I'm just like, I'm oh, curious. Seven. <laughs> I, I don't get to see it from your perspective, you know, but that's just the way I've personally felt. So I never wanted to do that to someone. But at any rate, about Rise of the Third Power, what do you think really is the most special aspect of this game to you personally? Well, so the combat is really good. I want to at least give a shout out. Like we're it's talking really a lot great, about actually, the story. Yeah. yeah. So um, Airfield's combat was that was. Joey um, Frost handled most of the combat for that. We kind of did it together, but he was really in charge of that. But this is his first time doing something like that. And for a first time, it came out amazing, I thought. It was um, good, yeah. But it was still, but it was kind of watered down and it was, we, there was a lot more we could have done with it. Um, whereas I've been, you know, I've been working on writing stories since I was a little kid. 
Um, so I've just got a lot more experience at that. Um, so anyway, he did an amazing job on the combat in this game. Like it's it's really much better than it has any right to it's be. It's really opinion. fun, actually. This whole idea of swapping out characters it adds almost like a tactical element to the game. That yeah, I wasn't that's really what we were going for. Makes it super fun. You have all these different characters that you can mix and match. They get a little bit tired out, so then you have to decide right. which character you want to put in. I just thought it was really a lot of fun, and it you know there is some. Uh, repetitiveness, I guess you could say, to turn-based battles yeah, of the past. Yeah, JRPGs so are, yeah. I thought they did a great job of mixing things up there. Um, yeah. So that um, would, you would say that was your proudest no, accomplishment I'm, I, this game? No, it's not. Um, no? I said that to, I wanted to give Joey a shout out because he did such a, because <laughs> I'm going to say like, I am really, like, I, I'm so happy with how the characters and the banter came out and like, I've, I have been honing my craft writing dialogue for so long and I just I was just really happy with how it came out and it, like um authors tend to have a very self-loathing thing going on and I was really bad about that for years um I like Arafel even I'd play through I want to be like this is trash how did you ever <laughs> <laughs> um, but I never felt like that with Rise of Third Power um that's not to say you know, I'm not trying to say it's great but I felt good about it like that was one of the only times I've written something where I felt good about everything I did. I think um, you should feel good about it. It's a great you. story. You know? <laughs> I actually don't care what anyone says out there. You know? I said one of the greatest games I've ever played. I stand by that statement. Evelyn, I like your personality too. It really, it's really quite the connection now. When I play Rise of the Third Power, I feel so much of you in that now. So that's I'm pretty really adorable. Cool. That's true. Can we do some fun, like just to get out of all this serious talk, some fun fast fire questions about you quick before right, I let you get out of here? Okay. All right, you ready to get into it? All right, so favorite food? Pizza. Pizza. We, we have Sorry. that in common. All right, also my favorite. Right, we have that in common with everybody. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes, but only <laughs> but only with ham, only the Hawaiian pizza. Favorite movie? Ooh, um, The Lion King. Good choice as well, also one of my favorites. Aladdin's a little bit better, sorry. Favorite <sighs> animal? I'm ending this. No. <laughs> Cats, where's my cat at? <laughs> Just the one cat you have? We have two. Here, I wonder if I can... My house is a mess. I'm not going to do that. Snappy's okay. <laughs> over there and Clover's sleeping over there. Now, this one's hard, but one okay. of your favorite games. Secret of Mana is my all-time favorite game. That was the first All-time favorite, really... aren't right. Yes, this is one that I... I don't think it holds up super well, except for the soundtrack, which I think is the best soundtrack ever made. Um, but as a kid, that was the first game that I really felt a deep connection with. Like, there's emotional moments in that game, which, like, as an adult, I was like, why did I care about that so much? But as a kid, I just bawled, like, when you get kicked out of the village and when you meet your mom and um, all Great this game. stuff. It's it's a complicated opinion on the game, but it's it has a place in my heart that nothing will ever supplant, so. <laughs> all right, last one. Biggest pet peeve. Sevens on my game. <laughs> <laughs> where can people learn more evelyn about rise of third power purchase it which they should by the way yeah they totally should <laughs> um our publisher is dangan uh that's uh dang oh man i don't remember their website Dangan. great publisher by the way yes we they've been so good to us i'm i love it. all right it is dangan entertainment.com um awesome publisher they're they're so fun and to here's another with. thing and, reviewers sorry to cut you off but Dangan gave us plenty of time to play this game. So you have no excuse. Yes, yes, we had, um, <laughs> we, um, I mean, the game was like officially. I think done we had it probably... for like two weeks before release or something. So it was done yeah. in November, um, ish, um, aside from just, you know, more bug fixing and stuff. But, um, we kept delaying it because stupid, um, what's that? What's that from software game that's coming out? Who's I can't think oh, of. Oh, Elden something. Elden, Elden Ring. Ring. Right. Elden Ring. <laughs> um, they kept delaying that, and we were like, well, we're Can not you tell like them direct... in the AAA industry here? I barely <laughs> knew the name of that game. I know, thing. me too. <laughs> um, but we kept, they kept delaying it, and we're like, we don't directly compete with them or anything, but we still don't want to release right when they do. We want to go like have some space. We kept having to plan around it. It was terrible. Um, and then trying to that, that has to happen. But I know, yeah. it's so it makes from a business stance, it makes sense, I guess. You have to. Yeah. Um, but anyway, they were so cool about like doing all that for us. Anyway, enough shilling for Dangan. Um, <laughs> so yeah, DanganEntertainment.com, StegasoftGames.com. Um, I'm Pixie Freaking Sticks on Twitter. Um, that's probably funny. <laughs> we're on, <laughs> on every major console. Uh, on Steam, PS4, Switch, Xbox, Switch. Xbox. 
Steam. Epic Games Store. I'll be buying again on Steam because that Steam Deck's coming out. So are you going to be running on That's Steem Deck? That's right. Should be no problem. So I okay. think so. I don't know what the plan <laughs> is exactly. That's all technical stuff, and it's above my head. That's above my pay grade. <laughs> right, they want uh, a new character written for the Steam Deck. I'll do that. But if we're actually being on it, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for coming, Evelyn. Please don't be a stranger. I hope yeah. you come back to I Dream of Indie sooner rather than later. Absolutely. I had a blast uh, talking to you. All right. Take care. Thank you too. Bye.